How She Likes It by Carla de Guzman. The conversation with Mabel followed with texts from work from people who should have been home hours ago on problems she couldn't solve until morning. And in the way that time zones worked, inquiries from possible distributors and requests from other time countries were coming in in a steady stream, each one bigger than the last and asking for her attention. Maybe it's time to stop drinking. But before she could ask for her check, a man flopped into the chair across from her, oblivious to her indecision as he pulled a beer can from the deep recesses of his jacket and took a large swallow. She could smell alcohol on him and could see just see the telltale tomato red flush that had taken over his entire face, even in the dim light. Even his ears, which were a little big, were red. Her staring must have put him off, but because he turned to her, Isabel could see the exact moment that his face lit up when he laid eyes on her. And it was very, very flattering. She knew she was gorgeous, but it was always nice to be reminded. He was too big and too tall for the chair, and he'd flopped into. But then again, you would be hard pressed to find chairs that fit a guy as tall and well built as he was. He ran a hand through a dark mop of wavy black hair, showing off the tension in his muscles, spindly veins in his long fingered hands that pulsed in the dim light. Are you the girl of my dreams? <laughs> And it should have sounded so corny, but Isabel was already two drinks in, and he made it sound so smooth. What? I was supposed to meet someone. It's a hookup. Ah, uh, I didn't think kids your age still did that, she said wryly. ASL? What? My point, exactly. I'm 25. He seemed offended that she would tease him like that. Not that much younger than you, probably. If Isabel could whistle, she would do it now, because 25 was young. She barely remembered being 25 herself. But for a kid in adult pants, he seemed mature. There was a confidence in the way he carried himself, even he w if he was sneaking beer into the bar. Or maybe it was just the lighting. But she had to admit that such light eyes were rare. They were almost green in the soft lights of the bar. She She's is incoming. He announced with a deep sigh, telling himself more than he was unhelpfully informing Isabel. She just messaged me. <laughs> then he looked at her expectantly and all Isabel could respond with was a raised eyebrow. Uh, I'm not looking to fall in love, she informed him. Or hook up with someone I met online. So maybe stop flirting with me. I wasn't aware that I was flirting. He frowned. I've been told it's the only way you fall in love with anyone these days. Swipe left, don't fall in love. Swipe right, and maybe they like you enough to fall in love with you too. Isabel wondered why he looked so wistful for someone who was so young and so close to getting laid. It made him a fascinating creature to watch, and the first thing that actually made her smile today. I just want to woo someone, you know? <laughs> she snorted. She hadn't heard anyone use the word woo outside of a last name. You're drunk. I am not drunk, he insisted, the words coming out harsh and a bit scary as he narrowed his eyes at her. Just sick of love, being lonely. He sighed and softened again, taking another swallow of his beer as he deflated. Isabel's eyes followed the amber liquid's path from the opening of the can to the tip of his plump lips, disappearing into his throat as his Adam's apple bobbed. 
Her eyes naturally wandered down his neck to the jut of his collarbones, to the dip where they met above his chest. He flared up to Isabel's already overheated cheeks. Forget a drink. Desire hit her at the most random moments, and most times there was very little she could do about it. She tilted her head slightly, trying to see more of him. She knew a bad idea when she knew a bad idea when she was saw one. This particular bad idea was in a bomber jacket that was a little too short around the sleeves for him, a tight black t-shirt, and its skinny jeans in the city's nicest bar. Not exactly Salon de Ning's target market, and the last guy her mother would think he would be appropriate for her. He was perfect. <laughs> Let's get out of here, she told him, feeling the flush of heat rise to her cheeks as she downed the last of her third drink. But what about the girl I'm supposed to fall in love with? You can fall in love with me instead, she snorted. <laughs> Are you sober? He made a show of standing up, walking across their chairs heel to toe, while his large hands were splayed out to the sides and turning like he was putting on a performance just for her. It took Isabel a moment to realize that he was performing one of those roadside sobriety tests she always saw in American TV shows. Are you sober? He asked her his eyebrow rising like it was more of a challenge than a question. Isabel rolled her eyes and extended her arms to the sides, tur taking turns, tapping her index finger on the tip of her nose. Just enough we can go to my place, she announced. Perfect. No, kid. You're perfect. <laughs> Isabel may not know his name, but she knew his son dear in the headlights look when she saw it. And that was what he was giving her now. Like she just explained life to him and then told him that Santa was actually pretty real. Say that again. He said, and Isabel could swear she just saw his bottom lip tremble. Nobody's ever... Please? I'd like to hear it again. Isabel had a soft spot for soft boys. <laughs> so she reached up, pulled him down a little as her hands pressed against her ch his cheeks and kissed him. It was a slow kiss that burned and sear and it was about feeling rather than tasting. They would have plenty of time for tasting later. <laughs> You're perfect, she told him. Now let's get out of here. How she likes it. My Harlan is right.